This is part two of this lecture on inflammatory bowel disease. And in the next five minutes or so, I will cover the differential diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease. If you remember from part one of this lecture, we talked about the histologic features needed to make a diagnosis of chronic colitis. I also told you that the feature that I rely on the most is basal plasmacytosis. I also told you that when you make a diagnosis of chronic colitis, the first thing to think of, at least in the United States, is inflammatory bowel disease. But before you make a definitive diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease, these are the conditions that you need to exclude. And exclude is what we are going to do for the rest of this talk. Let's say this is a 50-year-old female with diarrhea for at least a month or so. The low part view, this does look like chronic colitis, right? There's some variation in crypt size. There's an expansion of the lamina propria. Perhaps there's some basal plasmacytosis here, but wait a minute, there is activity, all right, and perhaps there's an erosion there. But what are these little things doing here? There they are. Here are the organisms. This is amoebiasis. Notice the red blood cells within the cytoplasm. Amoebiasis, I can promise you, is a very close mimic of inflammatory bowel disease. So look for the organisms within the crud, within that exudate. Now, if you live in the subcontinent, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, you'll probably be very familiar with this. This does look like chronic colitis, right? So there's foreshortening, there's basal plasma cytosis, but as any pathologist working there will tell you, before you make a diagnosis of inflammatory bowel disease in an individual, that lives in the subcontinent in that think tuberculosis. Here's a granuloma, here's a Langerhans type giant cell. And remember, biopsies may not capture those granulomas. And here's another very well formed granuloma. So think tuberculosis, particularly if you see a patient from a region with a very high incidence of tuberculosis. Here's another lady, this one I remember fairly well, a young woman with diarrhea for about five weeks, and you can see these erosions on endoscopy. The hint here was that she had received a renal transplant, something that I did not pay attention to when I originally signed this out. Here's the biopsy. Now, I did not leap to a diagnosis of chronic colitis, although there is some variation in crypt size, and there are a few plasma cells that are trickling to the base of this biopsy. There's certainly some basal plasma cytosis here, but look at these crypts. They look like dilated and damaged crypts. That perhaps is the best way to describe those crypts. But in addition, notice this increase in apoptotic activity. Those features, that dilated damaged crypt, that increase in apoptotic activity is very typical of mycophenolate morphetal related colitis. Per se, this is not chronic colitis. I would prefer to classify this as acute self-limiting colitis. But I could argue that there is some basal plasma cytosis, although the crypt architecture seems to be largely intact. This is not infectious colitis. This patient was on a checkpoint inhibitor. And generally, patients on any checkpoint inhibitor, including PD-1 inhibitors, tend not to show a chronic colitis pattern in our experience. However, there have been other folks that have reported chronic colitis in patients with PD-1 inhibitors. I love this example. Now, this is from the cecum. This was a completely asymptomatic patient, and you've got to give it to me. This does look like chronic colitis, right? Basal plasma cytosis. There's even a branch there. There's some variation in crypt size. There's a huge expansion of the lamina propria, but this is not inflammatory bowel disease. This is NSAID-related colitis. You take the NSAIDs away, and this picture of active chronic colitis essentially goes back to normal. The hint that you're dealing with a drug-induced NSAID-related colitis is the fact that this patient, these patients are asymptomatic. These are red erythematous lesions identified during a screening colonoscopy. Remember, the overwhelming majority of patients with inflammatory bowel disease have some symptoms, specifically diarrhea. All right, so that's it for drug-related colitis. There are several other drugs that could cause colitis, and I will not have the time to talk about them. But I did want to talk about diversion colitis primarily because if you are not aware of this condition, you might unnecessarily label somebody 
with inflammatory bowel disease. So a quick word about diversion. Diversion colitis arises in what is known as the Hartman's pouch. This is the pouch that is disconnected from the fecal stream because the fecal material is coming out of the stoma here. This is believed to be a deficiency of short chain fatty acids. When you see a confluent pattern of large germinal centers on low power, that is very likely to be diversion colitis. Inflammatory bowel disease, whether it's Crohn's colitis or ulcerative colitis, seldom shows reactive germinal centers in this fashion. And if you don't believe me, look at these reactive germinal centers right here. The rest of the colon shows active chronic colitis. Images from those areas of active chronic colitis would mimic inflammatory bowel disease. Now this turns out to be a very unexpected mimic of inflammatory bowel disease and, and chronic colitis. Notice the basal plasmacytosis, the shortening of the crib. There's even some activity. Is this ulcerative colitis? Is this Crohn's colitis? Turns out to be neither. The answer is collagenous colitis. And this turns out to be a completely unexpected mimic of inflammatory bowel disease. The one thing I will say that helps you define this obviously is the collagen membrane. You do not see a thickened collagen membrane in ulcerative colitis. You may see some fibrosis in Crohn's disease. The second thing is notice how the crypts they may be a little distorted, but by and large they are somewhat running in parallel. Would you agree? And there's the thickened collagen layer for you. And one final mimic. What do you guys think of this, right? So there's the mucosa looks a little thinned out. There is a thickened or some collagen up here in the upper half of the mucosa. Perhaps there's some basal plasma cytosis. Perhaps there's some foreshortening. But again, the crypt architecture is largely intact. And wow, look at the amount of collagen. This is way above what you would see with collagenous colitis. This is not chronic colitis, ladies and gentlemen. This is chronic radiation injury, another mimic of inflammatory bowel disease and chronic colitis.